Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about Hilo algorithm and how you can use it in NTD framework. Uh, so many times uh, when you are working with data, you need to know the uh, value of key or primary key before saving data to the database. There are plenty of reasons uh, for you to require such a functionality. Maybe you want to cross-reference the primary key in another table. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Why you need uh, to know the primary key beforehand. Uh, but let's talk about the options we have uh, when we need uh, such a functionality. Well, there are plenty of reasons why you might need to know the value of primary key beforehand. Uh, like if you want to cross-reference the uh, current entity uh, into another table, uh, you need to know the key. Uh, otherwise, you have to uh, save and query a couple of times uh, and uh, that's not really uh, optimized. Uh, so um, there are usually three options for you uh, to know the primary key before saving the data to database. The first one is using a natural key. Like if you are working with a student of a college, each student has an ID number and you can use that number to save uh, a student's data. Uh, it's good, but usually finding a good um, natural key is difficult. The other option is using GUIDs. A GUID or Global Unique Identification is um, very unique. It is uh, very practical. It is being used in very large databases, but each uh, GUID uh, has 128 bits of information it's a large type of key and working with it is hard it, it has 36 characters and uh, hexadecimal numbers it's just mm, too much uh, for most data types and uh, the third option is using the high low algorithm uh, which I am going to talk about here. First, let me explain how Hilo algorithm works. Uh, basically, the algorithm is going to generate a number for you. That number comes from uh, two other numbers. And the first one is the high number, then the other one is the low number. The high uh, comes from database, and the database is responsible for managing the high part, and the low part is uh, inside your application and your application saves it uh, manage the states of uh, state of it and uh, using the high value from database and the low value from your application uh, there's a formula that uh, generates the key for you so the current value of high multiplied by the maximum number of low plus uh, current value of low uh, equals key so when your application starts, Entity Framework asks SQL Server uh, for the value of current high. Uh, suppose it is 1. And in your code, you specify the maximum value of low, uh, for example, 1000. And then uh, at the beginning, the current value of low is 0. Uh, so uh, when you start your application, the first uh, key is zero. Uh, zero multiplied by zero or, or thousand uh, equals zero plus zero. The first key is going to be zero. But then uh, your application does not require to ask the database for the next high. It, keeps the high inside a value inside a, inside memory and keeps adding to the current low. So you go from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
and it adds up and adds up until you reach the maximum value of low which is a thousand when you reach the maximum value uh, your application asks for the next high uh, from the database again so uh, between these 1000 records you do not need to uh, go back to SQL, SQL server to know what is the high value uh, unless of course your application crashes or uh, stops or um, something happens in the database it is all managed by entity framework and SQL server and uh, you don't need to know anything about it that's not your concern how uh, exactly Hilo works and how entity framework and SQL server manage the values of high and low the only thing that you should know is uh, for the value of maximum of allow that you specify your application does not need to call database to know what is the next key it generates the key inside your application inside your memory and it is very fast uh, very optimized uh, so uh, you get the benefit of having a unique key at the same time you don't uh, have to call the database at each time you need a key and uh, also you know the key before saving the data to the database so let's go into our demo application and uh, see how exactly it works using ace.net core 5 entity framework 5 and c sharp so i have a very basic ace.net core project here i have only one model called blog and it has an id column that uh, currently is uh, being generated by the database so when i create a new blog uh, in page uh, blogs and uh, create uh, i don't know the value of id before uh, the uh, save change happens so to use high algorithm you can go to your db context and add uh, or override uh, the on model creating method like this and i go to model builder and uh, call for my entity which is blog and go to property and pick uh, the id property p.id and then i can use high low like this and then um, specify the name of um, the sequence uh, i pick uh, seq one uh, or let's pick it block uh, sec one and that's it that's uh, all you need to do to uh, specify uh, using high low algorithm for an entity uh, now let's add a migration you should know that i am using sql server some databases uh, don't support the uh, high low algorithms uh, and uh, sequencing uh, but most of the more uh, famous ones like sql server do support uh, this feature so let's add uh, a migration and call it a blog uh, sequence and wait for it to generate the codes you can see that we are creating a sequence to a SQL server that increments by 10 this is the default value uh, when you uh, specify the high low algorithm without any uh, more details uh, by default you get the increment by 10 this 10 is actually the max low 
uh, which we talked about here uh, so I get 10 keys uh, each time I call the high uh, value in database and uh, so I get 1 1 to 3 to, to 10 and then uh, I need to call the database again and ask for a new high and uh, then I can have 10 more records that we took calling the database so let's add a couple of breakpoints here and uh, run the application in debugging mode and uh, see if everything works so my application is up and running i create a new blog let's call it test one and some random description submit and we reach to this part and uh, when we are here let's check the the new um, entry and you can see that uh, the id of our new entity is one and we haven't uh, saved the data to database yet so our hilo algorithm is working let's continue and uh, run the application see and we have the id one and uh, everything worked and uh, the way we expected let's clear this and add more test items Let's see we are getting the two and we are going getting the three for id and now let's stop the application and uh, now let's run the application again i want to see what uh, is going to be my next id let's go to this one and add one more you see that we are getting number 11 because uh, when we close the application uh, the session ended and uh, now when you run the application again you ask for database for the value of i and somehow sql server decides that and the high value should be changed before it was zero and now it is one uh, one multiplied by ten uh, which is the value uh, we saw in here uh, equals ten and plus the current value of low uh, according to this uh, formula uh, becomes the value of 11 for key so the current low uh, at the beginning is 1 and and now you can keep and uh, creating more uh, entities and uh, the current low uh, will be adding up 1 2 3 4 and the keys would be uh, 12 13 14 until you reach the 20 when you reach the 20 the max low and uh, current low uh, equals and uh, this part of algorithm uh, runs okay that's how you can use uh, high loop algorithm uh, in the most basic way but usually you want to specify uh, the details of uh, sequence and, and not just use the default values and 10 is not really a good number uh, when you are going to create uh, a lot uh, rows at the same time uh, so let's come back in here and uh, go to model builder and um, let's create a sequence mm use has sequence yes it's specify the type of sequence then uh, you specify the name of sequence which is going to be sec2 and then you can uh, go to a starts at uh, start at uh, something like 10 and increment by uh, thousand uh, this way 
and you can create the sequence on your own and then I can use this name here uh, to uh, my blog and next and let's uh, create another migration project manager console let's clear and add another migration blog c2 and doesn't matter really let's create it uh, let's update it uh, you can see that the uh, plug sec sequence is being dropped and there is a new sequence uh, with these default values that we specified uh, so we have a new sequence and uh, let's uh, run the project again and uh, create uh, see that we have this one because uh, our starting value was 10 and uh, let's submit um, already uh, we have another key because we already had some data using another sequence uh, it happens uh, so uh, let's uh, go to uh, blogs uh, let's create another one this time the problem solved um, let's do another one and that's how it works it keeps on adding and adding and uh, we um, use the high low algorithm every time we create a new entity so that's it for today i showed you how you can use high low algorithm in entity framework as you can see it's a very simple one and you can always uh, use this when you need to know the value of key before saving data. Thanks for watching and see you next videos.